Hey guys. Uh, so I was contacted by somebody who had seen some of my videos and they asked if I would be interested in uh, using some vintage blades. And uh, they sent me the Persona 74. These are tungsten blades and they sent me a couple different types and I'm really privileged and uh, grateful to receive them. And uh, I just pulled uh, this guy out of the box. So this is actually a new in box. Uh, Persona 74 tungsten blade and I've actually heard really really good things about this blade so it's, that's why it uh, is the first one I'm going to try out. Uh, why would you want to use vintage blades? Well for the same reason you might want to use a certain type of a, a current blade. Uh, it's possible that because these blades are just so subjective and so variable that you find a magic combination that works really well for you that is comfortable is also smooth and uh, and gives you a really good close cut and so if you find that one and it happens to be vintage then it may be worth your while to uh, to pick up some vintage blades and you know of course eBay and other places like that are the um, uh, usually uh, where you want to obtain these guys and this is if you've never seen one of these um, they uh, are pretty cool you, uh, the arrows will tell you which way to pull the blade out. I've already partially pulled this one out. Just, I wanted to inspect the edge. Uh, and then in the back, it's got a place to put the blades uh, for disposal. And this, this design hasn't changed probably in decades uh, because you can go to a drugstore that has double-edged blades and very often it'll be in a case almost identical in at least shape uh, to this one. And so that aspect hasn't really needed to change for a very long time. Uh, so yeah, I did take out the blade and just looked at it because if you're going to use a vintage blade, make sure it hasn't rusted or anything like that. Um, so let's turn it over so you can take a look. Persona 74 Tungsten. Definitely some research uh, online about this one. There's uh, good hit results if you want to read some forums, things like that uh, about people who love this blade. I'm going to be using it in my uh, Wolfman, and this is a 54, I think, is the blade gap uh, for this guy. I will put him in. I've been using my Nasset so much, it feels very strange not to be using that one. But I've got it at, I think, 173 uses, and uh, August only has 31 days, and so I wanted to... Uh, use the same blade for all of August and kind of time it toward the end. And so now's my chance to use a different blade. And so I chose this guy. So the Wolfman does a great job of centering the blade, aligning it properly every time because of those nice rails that are on the top cap. Many razors have that. Uh, so this is the, uh, I think the H2 handle. I just think it's beautiful. You can, uh, if you're able to ever find one, they do have it hollow. Uh, you can customize it that way and you can reduce the weight a little bit if this is too heavy can definitely see how some people might think it would be a little too heavy. Uh, so here's the uh, that packaging. You get 10 blades in the in the box. Oh and look at this one. Nash uh, in all 26 National Football League locker rooms. Okay, so we got a sponsorship deal going there. How about that? So if you want to freeze frame, now's a chance to do that and do some reading or whatever. Hope that hopefully the resolution is high enough. Um, let's do some reading here. Uh, tungsten steel is one of the hardest materials known to man. No metal holds a sharper edge. For years, the metallurgists all over the world have used tungsten steel for cutting tasks, which require extra hard and durable edges. Now for the first time, a razor blade is able to use the toughness of tungsten to produce the sharpest, most durable blade ever made. Tungsten tough and coated with an exclusive titanium process to give you more clean, smooth shaves than ever before. The Persona 74. Ah, and it has a little footnote. 74 is the element number of tungsten. So that's where we get the 74. How about that? All right, uh, this is made by ASR, the American Safety Razor Company. A developed division of Philip Morris. How about that? And you saw the NFL reference. Stock number 1260. <laughs> How about that? $1.69. Okay. 
So what other gear do we have? Um, same brush I used yesterday with the same number of O-rings. I'm going to give it another chance. It was a little stiff yesterday, a little uh, less likely to um, splay smoothly. And so we're going to give it one more chance today, see if it behaves the same. It's been soaking for several minutes in some water. And then another biggie today. Yesterday, I received my order for Admiral. It's a Chatillon Lux collaboration with Declaration Grooming. Declaration provides the soap base and uh, Chatty Lux uh, provides the uh, scent. And I usually never order a soap new like this, but there is a certain genre and, uh, and a certain flavor scent profile that does attract me and will often cause me to go ahead and get it. In addition, because this is kind of a, as far as I know, as far as they've said, it's a one-time offering. Um, and so I just got it the other day. It's possible that you can still get it out there if you're interested in it. Um, I'll probably pause the video and go find the scent notes because I want to provide those for you. I'll definitely put them into the description of the video, but I also want to give them to you verbally too. It's called Admiral. The general idea is that it is a, uh, a scent inspired by uh, the the river and the riverboat. There's a smoke element in here. There are strong citrus notes as well. Is the description, but when I'm smelling it from the puck here, I'm not getting tons of citrus. Um, there's almost uh, uh, some other more, I don't know, mellow, manly notes that are cooperating and joining with the citrus, so that the citrus is not super dominant. I'm actually kind of happy about that. Of course, who knows how it will smell when it's lathered. All right, so I went and took a look on the website and the, uh, the name Admiral comes from the name of the actual riverboat that went up and down the, Missouri, the Mississippi River and it was near St. Louis in many cases and uh, as you know, as you may know, uh, Chatillon Lux does a lot of their scents based on regional themes in the St. Louis, uh, St. Louis area. Uh, the notes for it are lemongrass, verbena, bergamot, uh, some aquatic notes, sage, black currant bud, smoke, tonka, and musk. Now from the tub, I think that tonka, tonka bean is coming uh, is one of the more noticeable and easily discernible scents. Uh, let's see what else I can pick up now that I have a list. Uh, and the thing about the Admiral, the boat, was that it was, I looked up online the, uh, uh, the pictures associated with it. It was an Art Deco type uh, riverboat. And so I was expecting the Samuel Clemens, uh, you know, vintage look but that's not at all what you get. It's very contemporary looking because that was the Art Deco look back then. And so it spent many years on the, on the water, but it was a, an icon in the St. Louis area, apparently. And so he's trying to capture uh, just a, a river, uh, fresh uh, smell with this, with this uh, riverboat smoke. And uh, he's, and I, I believe some of the notes are saying that it's an aquatic for people who don't like aquatics. And uh, there are lots of contemporary fragrances right now that are aquatics and, and sometimes they have a, a certain kind of scent that some people think is synthetic and don't really like. Well, this may be the way to get in and get an aquatic without it being similar to that. Not a lot of citrus is jumping out at me right now. Only a little bit of the aquatic. Kind of just a fresh, a fresh water type scent. I think that black current might be uh, coming through. Not a lot of sage, which I'm happy about. That tonka is kind of sweeten sweetening things up. Not not a lot of musk either yet. But like I said, let's see how what happens when we lather it up. Okay, so I showed you the razor, the brush, the soap. I think we're ready to go. So Chatillon Lux and Declaration Grooming, Admiral. Currently available. I saw the. Uh, saw it up, still up at Maggard's. Uh, splash my face with some water. This is hard water. It's tepid as usual here. I 
Okay. Shake most of the water out of my brush. This is a 24 millimeter knot. All right. This is how how it looks. Hey, looks like two eyeballs, right? Got a man in the moon kind of thing going on here. Okay, so 25, 26, 27, and 30 seconds. We'll do a 30 second load, kind of is my custom when I'm un un when it's an unknown. Light pressure, just make it splay just a little bit. In this case, it's probably not splaying, it's probably just bending just a little bit. Eight more seconds. And there's 30. So that is what 30 seconds looks like on a B5 Badger brush. B5 is the batch number for declaration. Hey, I'm using a declaration grooming knot with a declaration soap. Nothing overflowed onto the threads. Don't need to clean that up. All right. My usual lather bowl as of the last several months, I guess. It's a 3D printed one. If you have access to a 3D printer, you can download the files. I've got a link on my uh, video description. So I'm going to give this brush. Uh, this is a DS Cosmetics handle, but uh, it's a Declaration Grooming uh, Badger Knot, and, the, and it's the B5 batch. It's got the reportedly lowest uh, backbone of many of his current batches, and so that's why it's attractive to me. I'm gonna see if I can get this guy to open up and splay a little bit more during the uh, during the lathering process, because that's just what I prefer. But if you loft it a little shorter, you'll get a kind of a wall of badger effect where you're just using the tips, and it's super soft. Don't get me wrong, um, but. You're just using the tips to uh, uh, to work on your face, and I prefer a bit of a splay. It just feels better to me. I'm gonna go ahead and put one teaspoon in. Uh, this is the new uh, Icarus Icarus soap base from Declaration Grooming, and I say new, but it's been several months now, I guess. So it's you know, but it's their newest one. It's a really good base, uh, especially for people who prefer post shave. Uh, features in their soap. I'm not quite that way, um, but it's still really slick and it doesn't puff up very much. Take a look at that. It's staying pretty low in the bowl and that's just the way it is. It's kind of the new trend for a lot. some of the uh, new bases that have come out. Bear Stern Man's Excelsior base as well as this one. Oh, you know what? I can never remember. Uh, the maker of Icarus, um, Scott, I believe he told, uh, has has told some people that uh, for a whole different Icarus experience, and many considered a better experience, uh, bloom the Icarus before you use it. Let some water sit on it before you load the brush, and it just changes it. Now, since this is not a, a, a triple milled soap, it's not actually a hard soap. Um, that's usually not recommended, especially by a barrister and man. Will was saying that some of the croaks can uh, be damaged um, and be rendered less effective if you bloom them. There are some YouTube guys online who do bloom their soaps and so I'm afraid a lot of people have uh, taken to doing that and when I say uh, their soaps I mean their cropes you know these artisan ones that are kind of soft if it's legit hard like a Mitchell's Wolf ad or DR Harris or uh, Prix de Provence uh, fine accoutrements if it's actually a hard soap then there's no problem with it, soaking it or blooming it or whatever so this is a great looking lather here let's see how much we've generated that should be plenty to do the shave And let's uh, feel of it. Yeah, let's go ahead and use that. Feels a little wet to the uh, 
to the fingers, but let's see if I get it on my face and it needs a little bit more water. I don't know. I haven't uh, lathered this one too much. So one and a half teaspoons of soap may have, may have over watered it. But you know what? Another thing we can do to help that out is let's just make sure we get a nice good mix so that uh, we don't have any spots wetter than others. Give it a shot. Wet my face. About 24 hours worth of growth, maybe a little less by an hour or so. And here we go. Not much soap is coming off of the brush right now, as you can probably tell. However, that's because there's not much in the center. It's so dense. That's just the way these brushes are. So what you do is you go to the side like this. And then you can start incorporating that around on your face. And then you can dip back into the, the bowl. Get a little bit more. Maybe this soap needs me to load for longer. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more. The scent on here is not super strong. Yeah. I think I got the consistency uh, in a place where I really like it for this soap. I just think maybe I didn't load quite enough onto the brush. All right, so let's do a, let's smell it. Yeah, I can, I can get a little bit of this, more of the citrus, lemongrass. Now, there are some scents and, and things where I read, somebody posted online and they seemed like an authoritative source where your perception of a scent can vary like 40% from somebody else's. Okay, so... This is just my perspective. That's what I'm bringing to you. Um, you may get uh, more uh, a different profile out of this. Uh, somebody, all I've been hearing is citrus as people have been getting their Admiral and using it, and they they everybody's really positive about it. Almost everybody. Um, you know, there's always exceptions, right? Um, but uh, they're bragging about the citrus, and I'm like, oh man, I don't want another citrus soap. And so I'm really happy to smell all those other things. Um, so the, uh, so some of those citrus things are coming out. I can, yeah, I can smell the aquatics, but man, it's balanced so nicely with the citrus and the tonka. Do I smell any smoke? I believe I read online where it was just a minuscule amount, uh, into, in a percentage of the, uh, the, the oil, or the scent mixture. It was a very small amount. So smoke people who don't like smoke shouldn't be you know, may not have a problem with it at all. I think I smell a little bit of it. I think it's blending really nicely with the Tonka and it's rendering the Tonka not quite as sweet as, as Tonka can be. And I don't really like that. Tonka and Amber, I think those kind of combine to make something I don't really enjoy. But this, I think the smoke is, you know what the smoke is doing in my perception to the Tonka? It's, Tonka is like eating boiled chicken. But smoke is like eating chicken that has has had a char put on it by the grill. It's much more interesting. And there's a little bit maybe of, of bitterness or some other type of note that's keeping it from being sweet. And it is, I really am enjoying that. All right, musk. Not really standing out super much, but that could also be a part of the mix uh, with the smoke that's helping that tonka to be uh, more mature and less, less uh, sweet. I bet that black current is, is coming into play too and helping out. I'm grateful to say, even in wet format, uh, wet form, the sage is just a supporting piece that I'm not really able to discern. Uh, I don't like a lot of sage. So I'm, I'm really liking this. This looks like a win for me. Uh, I was guessing that I would enjoy it. 
and I am. And so we'll get a nice slick layer down. Yeah, this may be one where I need to load for 45 seconds or something like that. Looking forward, I've just been using my Timeless and some other razors that are uh, up to the task of handling my vintage Nasset, my vintage, my aged Nasset. It's got 173 uses on it and I'm gonna use it for all of August, austere August. If you wanna join in and use one setup for all of August, you can feel free to join in. Uh, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go um, on the wet shaving subreddit. There is a, uh, a list of the different modes that you can do. So one, sometimes people just do an entry level where it's just the same soap all month. Now, some of you, maybe you only have one soap or you like to cycle through soaps by using them all and then moving on to the next one, you know, and using it all. And so in, in a sense, it's, it's a day walk in the park for you. Uh, but uh, using the same soap all month is one level. Using the same soap and razor all month is another level. And, uh, but the ultra nightmare mode is to use the same blade, the same uh, post shave product, the same soap, the same brush, and the same razor for the entire month. And that's what I did last year, and that's what started me on this NASA journey that I've been on. And so I think it's fitting to finish up close to about 200 uses, 200 or over, by the time August is done. And so uh, I've got a few days now before August starts to use some other razors that I enjoy that can handle any blade that I throw at them. Let's see how this, uh, this is a more mild Wolfman. It's a notch milder than the standard gap. And that's where I prefer, I wanted, this is a lifetime razor. I'm gonna pass down to my kid. And I wanted it to be one that just wasn't always bleeding edge efficient. I wanted smooth, but efficient shaves. And so far that's what it's given me. Very comfortable, very smooth shave. Yeah, that's magic on a stick. I mean, nothing anywhere near tugging. Nothing anywhere resembling tugging. This does have some similar notes, like to uh, maybe to Bon Vivant from Chatillon Lux. That's a French area of the world. Um, very French inspired, you know, Louisiana Purchase and all that stuff. Uh, French settled there, and so a lot of his uh, work will have French names. Well, if you want a soap that spoils you, this Icarus base is gonna do that because it gives great feel, great uh, creaminess when rinsing. Face just feels really good afterwards. Who knows, I might not need an, uh, to, to load more soap. This might be just enough. Did a nice cutting job. The first pass, so my face felt really good after. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to take off one of these O-rings. It's just not splaying very much. And to me, the the splay with just kind of medium backbone is just that luxurious feel that I, I am chasing. And I've got a good many silver tips that already do it. Yeah, yeah, I like this guy a lot. He's he's nuanced. He's not super strong, uh, and in and if you don't think about it, it's going to smell similar to some different ones that uh, may be out there already. Uh, but then when you start to uh, think about the notes and and the nuances that are that are involved, you you realize how how different it is. Smooth as butter. 
hopefully we'll get to the end of the shave and this smoothness will be accompanied by closeness. We don't want smoothness without a good cut, a good close cut. Because a crappy razor can can be smooth because the blade's not doing a good job, right? Nice post shave, uh, post, um, not post shave, but secondary slickness. I could go back on an area if I needed to without relathering, as long as I didn't wait too long. Third pass. All right, a little half pass there. And again, just wonderful, luxurious feel in the rinsing department. done enough scrubbing now so it's just a matter of painting it on turning the brush a little bit to get the chunks that are on the side of the brush so it didn't look like three passes was going to be available to me in the lather but no problem it worked out just fine because you don't actually need a whole lot In a sense, all you need is a super tiny film over your skin that provides the slickness that protects your skin. So this blade has been a joy to use so far. So it is a vintage blade, and so I did inspect the edge, not with a microscope or anything, but I looked for, you know, rust or anything, because that kind of, that can happen sometimes. When uh, metal is stored over time, of course. Fortunately, with coatings like titanium and all that, and I think some have even made the, postulation, the point that these Teflon coatings that are on the blades, so many of them brag about different iridium and all these different kind of coatings are there not to help you with a good shave, but just to protect the blade while it's in storage, while it's waiting to be used. Because these coatings are so thin on the blade is, is what I've read that they are worn away pretty quickly after the first use. And so then they're, they're no help to you, but they preserve the blade uh, to keep it for you to, uh, for when you need to use it. That's uh, one theory that's out there. Face feels good. We'll do an inspection. I do feel a little bit in my neck. I believe I probably overshot my hair area a little bit yeah there's a little tiny weeper right there this is kind of the no shave zone i don't have any uh, beard right there and so if i go down a little too far maybe i forget to clear the shaving cream the lather from my for my neck in the right zone i can go down a little too far and uh, and get an area that is not meant to be shaved uh, but other than that excellent close shave big thumbs up for this combination at least for my skin of the uh, Persona 74 um, with the uh, with the Wolfman, and I got a feeling I can use many different razors in my collection with this blade and have a good experience. Uh, so, uh, because this is a mild, uh, this is a mild razor, milder than average. Uh, so I got a comfortable shave, but it's also it's still an efficient cutter because I, I do feel a couple of little tender spots, and I'm kind of glad about that because. That means that the blade is still doing its job and, uh, and, and doing it well. And that, that tenderness goes away after just a couple minutes anyway. In terms of scent strength, I'm going to say, for my, in my opinion, this is about a 4 out of 10. Lightly available during the shave. 
Um, that's just kind of where I put it. Uh, it might be nice if we're just a little stronger, but it's kind of a casual scent to me, and I appreciate its nuances. Uh, if this one was super strong, it might be a little, a um, little bit too much. A very, a very rich scent, if I can put it that way. And so having it be a little subdued might be a favor. So, uh, so there's that. And it was a uh, teaspoon and a half of water that took it that far. I used up pretty much everything I had. See how much is still in the brush. So yeah, I could have milked the brush a little bit and gotten some more on my face for that last pass, but that's a good scent. I like it. Um, but, you know, I don't usually do that. It's just not one of my habits. Uh, and so to me, this is what's in the brush at any given moment. People call the brushes lather hogs. They don't release their lather too easy, but I mean, it's got it right here. You can just yank it out like I just did. But what I did, how, what I do to address the whole lather hog issue is just load for a few more seconds and you get more lather, you know, and relatively soap is pretty cheap. All right, uh, I, I'm going to use my Soap Commander Unscented Balm because I think I want to try to enjoy this scent for a little bit longer. And here we go. There are two variations on the Unscented Balm. And if it matters to you, pay attention down here, menthol free. There is an Unscented that has menthol. Most of the balms for Soap Commander do have menthol and that's bad news for me but good news for many. And so this is the only one they have that's alcohol free. I mean, uh, menthol free. So hopefully it doesn't cover up the scent very much. Hopefully it works with it just fine. Cause I'm definitely enjoying this scent. I'm glad I, I uh, bought this soap. Definitely one to enjoy for years to come. And there we go. I didn't bother uh, getting the uh, aftershave because uh, odds are my wife's not going to like that too much. And I have certain ones that she likes, and so I just wear those. Face feels good. It's a nice close shave. Almost baby butt smooth on the cheeks. And the uh, I just see just a few little, uh, I just see some tips in my trouble spot area. I don't see any length on any of the hairs and that is a that's top marks for my for my particular beard situation right here um, and I'm sure this balm is going to cal uh, calm down uh, any of the, uh, the irritation that I might have so I'm in good shape I like this guy now I am experiencing it's almost like the balm has stirred up some irritation and you know what I might I think that might be is uh, just friction from the application of the balm because I didn't really splash my face beforehand and so that, that could be what it is. I'll check that out. Pay attention to that next time. Uh, so, yes, I believe I'm definitely going to take one of these O-rings off of this brush. Um, it's just a little too tight for me. The density here is just so much that it's not splaying. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to, to splay it when, when I'm applying lather. And, and that's just not my style. Uh, a lot of people like it. And there's nothing wrong with that but it's not for me all right so we'll take an o-ring off it'll open up a little bit more and we'll keep testing it could be that the tungsten 74 was referenced on the web as a blade that could go a long way uh, get a lot of miles out of it because of the uh, hardness of this of the metal perhaps and so we'll definitely see uh, i'll push it see how far i can make it go and that might be part of the the benefit of this particular one um, in terms of does it beat uh, anything that else that I've got that's current and more easily available, I don't think it does, uh, for uh, at least in this razor. So uh, um, it was a, a joy to shave with, and I, and I really appreciate it a lot. And it seems like a really good blade uh, so far for me at least. I'll put it in another razor and, uh, and probably enjoy it there too. Uh, but in terms of it offering something different 
maybe you'd want to go pay some high prices on on eBay for at least for my skin it it doesn't seem to to offer that uh, but we'll uh, but that could change in other razors that could also change 30 uses down the road 40 uses down the road if it's still delivering it could possibly deliver a better shave uh, farther down the road where other blades may have diminished a little bit so we'll that's the kind of thing we'll see with time but I'm very grateful to receive uh, this vintage blade and I will definitely enjoy uh, using these guys and since I'm going to take this guy on a on a long journey I've marked him with an M for marathon and uh, and we'll use him again uh, so it's a good blade I'm also uh, really happy to receive these so that we can kind of just throw some documentation out there uh, into the world regarding these blades. Uh, since they're a little harder to come by, it's possible that uh, they don't get a lot of uh, reviews and, uh, and documentation uh, on, the, on the web in videos or uh, forum commentaries. So let's get some good information out there uh, for history as well. And, uh, and this also goes to show us that um, this is an excellent blade and it's been around for a long time. And so, uh, let's see, was there any kind of date on the box here? I don't, I don't see one. Uh, so, we could look back and see when the NFL had them as a sponsor, right? But, um, uh, it's uh, proof that we've had excellent blades for a really long time because these these blades definitely compete with some of the good ones that we have, uh, some of the best that we have today available any time we want to buy them. Uh, and so that's, that's a, a neat thing to think about too. All right, so I'm a happy camper uh, about this shave. As the minutes go by, I'm still really enjoying this scent. It's not obnoxious or obtrusive. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna offend other folks. Um, it's, it's just up here. I think maybe they have, uh, there's several ingredients in there that are kind of the base notes um, uh, that last a little bit longer. They don't, they don't evaporate quite as quickly. Um, so I'm really happy about that. I've removed, <laughs> I put on an O-ring here um, uh, on my finger because it's not on my brush anymore. So I'm looking forward to trying that tomorrow and see what difference maybe two, two and a half millimeters makes with the loft of that brush. And, uh, and we're good to go. So um, I hope there was something here for you. It's a new scent that's out in the world, uh, available at Maggard, um, also available at Declaration Grooming, I believe, um, as far as the soap goes. And uh, Chatillon Lux has the uh, aftershave, and I'm pretty sure there's perfumes, the EDPs, EDTs, that sort of thing out there as well. So uh, excellent, excellent stuff in my opinion. Um, I'm, I'm glad they brought this to the table and it's, um, it's similar to some things that are out there, but when you settle into it and when you really appreciate it, you start to, you start to see the differences. So make sure you do that if you uh, play around with Admiral. All right now, uh, you take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Have a good day.